All right, welcome to Introduction to Wireless Communications. I'm Sandeep Rangan at New York University. So this video is actually the first of what I'm hoping to be a sequence of lectures that I'm recording on YouTube for our introductory wireless communications class here at New York University. The videos are just one part of all the course material. I've tried to put all the material up on a GitHub site. The link is below. So check it out and let's get started with the class. So let's start with what is wireless communication. So wireless communications, it's any communication, of course, of some information via radio waves without a conductor, meaning without a wire. So of course, most wireless systems have at least three components. There is a transmitter, which would be the source of information, in this case, say a wireless access point, a receiver, which is something that's going to receive that information, maybe in this case, say your smartphone, maybe in fact, you're listening to this um, video over a smartphone connected to an access point. And what's important for wireless is that that information propagates through a wireless channel meaning simply a channel without a wire, like air. So, there, of course, there are many examples of wireless communication systems. Many of these you use every day. Most probably familiar to you is your smartphone, and your smartphone, for example, could be connected to a cellular network. So examples of a couple of possible base stations, what you might call a macro cell, being a very large base station out in the suburbs or countryside, or smaller micro cells. Uh, of course, it can also collect, connect to a Wi-Fi access point, maybe in your home or in your office. In fact, you might be connected to one right now. But other wireless devices as well, for example, wearables like uh, uh, wireless headsets. There are also all sorts of wireless sensors already deployed out there right now. This is a picture of a carbon dioxide center, sensor, as well as satellite communications for longer range links. What's exciting about wireless though right now is that we're envisioning that there's going to be a whole number of new devices that will also get connected via wireless. Via wireless. For example, robotics, um, connected cars, particularly in conjunction with autonomous driving, maybe to get data for improved safety, um, virtual reality headsets to give an untethered experience to make it portable and mobile, uh, UAVs, of course, would naturally have to be wireless because they're flying in the air, as well as a whole number of low power devices, sometimes called the Internet of Things, things like sensors and other types of low de of power devices that can go into infrastructure. All of these devices, wireless uh, connectivity can provide a number of distinct advantages. <clears throat> For example, it can make these devices portable, it can make them mobile, it can give them access to data on the fly ubiquitously, and some of these requiring very high data rates, particularly, for example, things like um, virtual reality, or maybe can give very fast connections for real-time control, such as in robotics and in flying drones. It can also give ubiquitous access to cloud services and data, which have become vital for all sorts of processing, particularly with the growth of AI. Indeed, you could think that virtually every electronic device can benefit in some way from wireless connectivity. And maybe it's some of these applications that drove you to take this class. All right, to meet these demands, wireless technology is evolving and there's a lot of new exciting technology out there. And one of the technologies that I'll talk about quite a bit in this class, which is super interesting, is 5G. So the first 5G networks uh, were rolled out last year. Um, and these are some photos by a journalist of the first uh, phones in downtown uh, Chicago when it was the trial um, network. And what that technology offers are a number of exciting possibilities by really expanding the performance of wireless, cellular wireless networks in a number of dimensions to increase the data rate or to offer very, very low latency, meaning low delay connections, as well as being able to collect lar connect large number of devices. And these new um, services will enable all sorts of new wireless types of devices and services that can be actually deployed on these networks. Now, what's fueling 5G is really just this incredible demand that we're seeing in all sorts of different dimensions, just as two um, statistics. One is from the Cisco annual internet report. Cisco tracks uh, all sorts of 
data about wireless connectivity and make certain projections. And remarkably, they're projecting that by, say, in about just a few years, there'll be more than 25 billion wirelessly connected devices. So that's really several, several devices per human. And in the developed world, that would be a large, um, quite a considerable number. So not, that's just not your smartphone, but also your tablets, TVs, uh, vehicles, all sorts of machine-to-machine -machine communication. Another dimension is just the incredible data rate that is going over wireless networks, which continues to grow really exponentially. Um, a statistic by Ericsson, for example, shows that it's going to be over 200 etabytes, and etabyte is a million terabytes if you can even get your um, mind around that kind of number. And a lot of that is in 5G or new technology, and maybe that's uh, what I'm hoping that you will try to uh, get some understanding of in this class. So the deployment of these wireless services that you're seeing today are really remarkable feats of engineering because wireless communication in general has a number of unique challenges relative to wired communication that maybe you saw in your digital communications class. The most obvious challenge is interference. So when you transmit wirelessly to a receiver, the signal propagates in all sorts of directions, including directions that you don't, where you don't intend that signal to go to. And that causes interference, and that becomes particularly difficult in any scenario where there are multiple users, for example, a cellular system or people sharing a wireless uh, access point and so on. Real closely related to this problem is that wireless transmissions have to be um, contained in spectrum, and that applies to both licensed and unlicensed spectrum. And that spectrum has become very, very congested, and therefore we need to be able to use the spectrum efficiently. Another problem that is closely, uh, that is very unique to wireless communications is fading. Unlike communication over a wire, which is generally very stable, wireless channels tend to fluctuate very rapidly, particularly when there's motion of the transmitter or receiver or obstacles in the environment. We're going to talk a lot about in this class how to model these kind of fluctuations and a related process of fading, and this will be one of the key challenges that we'll have to address. And finally, any or many wireless devices operate in handheld devices or in uh, devices with very small form factors and therefore are limited in terms of battery and processing. And all of these aspects are not as present in standard wired communications. So what I want to do in this class is give you the tools to really quantify and understand these problems and try to overcome them. And, and so I'm hoping there's the following uh, that you'll get out of this if you suffer through the whole length of this class. The first part is really just trying to understand the basic um, mechanisms of modeling channels. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to write programs and uh, that can simulate wireless channels accurately. And that includes just the antennas, the actual EM propagation, but all the key characteristics as well that are um, happen in real environments, like multipath, um, statistical models, and so on. Um, I really want you also, by the end of this class, to really simulate and build end-to-end -end at least a simple wireless transceiver. So I want you to know how to actually code up and simulate all the key components, uh, the physical layer, as well as a bit of the upper layer uh, protocol stack, and then connect it together. So you'll really have an end-to-end -end understanding of what happens in a full communication path. And as I was talking about in the last slide about challenges, I want you to get the tools to be able to really mathematically define and measure um, uh, wireless performance and also model those key impairments that we see in wireless devices. Finally, I really want to give you a lot of examples of real commercial systems in use today. Uh, my own background was a lot in the cellular space, so I'll draw on that, uh, give you a lot of examples of 4G systems and evolving 5G and maybe even some of the research directions in 6G and Wi-Fi and other areas. All right. 
the um, in terms of prerequisites for the class, this is really a graduate level class intended for masters and PhD students um, at our university. Um, I'm hoping though to make it a little bit accessible uh, as well. Maybe you're a wireless engineer already working in the field and you want to get a little bit more of a theoretical conceptual background to help you improve your designs. Um, or maybe you're actually not looking at uh, wireless research in itself, but maybe you want to apply wireless in a lot of the areas that it can actually um, improve uh, devices like in robotics or vision. Um, because this is a graduate level class, it will uh, assume some graduate level probability and digital comm as a uh, um, background. So it, if you're a student at NYU, we offer these classes, but wherever you've taken, I just hope that you already know how to model the basic components, at least of a wired communication system, meaning the mixer, synchronization, and so on. We need a little bit of math, not too much, but a little bit of some basic probability and random processes. Now, finally, a lot of the exercises that you'll see on the GitHub site are in MATLAB, and I think some I'll add probably in Python as well. Uh, you don't need to specifically know those languages. You can pick them up. That's not hard, but, but you will have to have some programming experience if you want to get the full um, value out of that, all that material. All right, um, there's no required text. I've tried to make this fully self-contained. That being said, there are a lot of great references if you want to go beyond this class. Um, there's an excellent new book out um, by Robert Heath and Angel Lozano, who are two of the uh, experts in MIMO communications. Actually, I spent uh, my summer or a bit of my last few months with uh, Professor Lozano in Spain uh, come up with some of this uh, material. So check this book out. This is a recent, very up-to-date text. There's really an excellent electromagnetics text. There's a lot, of course, text in electromagnetics in general, but there's this great one by Ali Niknajad, who's really an expert in the area of high-frequency RF, and he's created a very nice book um, for some of that perspective, particularly if you're interested in the millimeter wave and high-frequency circuits. Um, it's a classic text by um, uh, Balanis on antenna theory. I'm going to talk about that in our first unit just a little bit. We don't have a chance to go fully deep into antennas, but if you want more, this is a great book. And finally, a very encyclopedic uh, reference. It might be a little much for this class, but you can use it as a reference, is Andy Mollish's book on wireless communications. All right. Uh, as I said, all the material for this uh, class is on a GitHub site, so the link is below, but here it is as well. So that includes all the slides that you're seeing right here, the links to this video and all the other videos. I tried to also put in some demos and MATLAB classes, uh, MATLAB exercises, uh, as well as some problems and labs. The, um, the, uh, sorry, if you want to access this then what you want to do is clone this repository and then uh, because i'll be updating this repository over the next uh, few months just keep on uh, pulling it to get the latest uh, material and the instructions for doing this if you're not familiar with github i'll put that up on the github site as well now uh, one thing that you will not find on the GitHub are the solutions to the problems of labs. They will actually only be available to NYU students that are enrolled in this class. But if you do really want it, shoot me an email and I might be able to send it to you. Um, as I said, a lot of the labs and demos are in MATLAB in this case. Uh, although some parts I might put in Python, particularly if we do any data analysis or machine learning, um, you really want to download the latest version of MATLAB because I've written it using the latest uh, um, packages. If you are an NYU student, you can get this for free, and it's probably the case you can get it for free if you are at another university. So um, this is the link for NYU students. Um, in addition to the core MATLAB, I've also um, used a number of the MATLAB's uh, great uh, 
toolboxes, in this case the communications, the antenna toolbox, and the phased array um, toolbox. And that gives a lot of tools for simulating wireless systems, and you can really create all the key building blocks, as well as the antennas and the phased arrays, all the physical layout components, and so on. You can also integrate that into Simulink, and you can even export sometimes the designs to HDL if you wanted, say, FPGA code, if you want to take that in one step beyond this class. Now, some of the demos are in one of the newer um, MATLAB features called Live Editor. And so this is basically, um, it's kind of similar to a Python Jupyter Notebook, if you've uh, uh, if you're familiar with that, it means that there are sort of code and text cells, so you can have highly easily documented um, code. You can easily include images and content and so on. But unlike Jupyter Notebook, which you can just um, view in your browser, you'll have to view this in the MATLAB IDE. So you're definitely going to have to get access to MATLAB if you want to access this part of the uh, material. All right, that uh, wraps up our introduction. So thanks again for uh, taking the time to look at this video, and I hope that you continue on to look at all the material and enjoy this class.